Everybody, small crowd, hopefully we get some more people filter in as I start here. Um, before, I, before I really start, I want to, and we're, I promise, we're gonna, the majority of this time is going to be like question and answer. Because this is being recorded on APTV, um, I'm going to ask you to go to the back and use the microphone if you have questions. When we get to that, that part, I want to just talk a little bit beforehand. Two Saturdays ago, I went out to dinner with uh, two very good friends of mine, Rita, and, um, and a mutual friend that we have, his name's Donald. And <laughs> we, we, before we started our dinner, before we ordered anything, we decided that how we're gonna split up the bill when the bill comes. We wrote down on a, on a napkin, we'll call it uh, the Constitution or something. We wrote down on a napkin how we're going to split up the bill. And how we decided to split up the bill was based on how much money we have in our pockets. Um, I am very affluent. I had $500,000 in my pocket. Rita had the same. She had $500,000 in her pocket. And uh, our friend Donald had about a million dollars in his pocket. So we sit down and we start to enjoy our dinner. and. Uh, I went all out, I'm not gonna lie. I had champagne, lobster, uh, you name it. I, I had shrimp cocktails coming to the table like crazy. And Rita ordered uh, a reasonable meal and uh, Donald ordered a, a taco bowl or something. So when the bill came, it was $100. Now we had the agreement ahead of time that this $100 is gonna be split up not based off of what we ate, the $100 was going to be split up based off of how much money we had in our pockets. And I had, I had the 500, she had 500, and our friend had a million. So the way that it got split up was Donald paid $50, I paid $25, and Rita paid $25. The next week came along, last Saturday, we went, out, we went back out to the same place. Uh, fortunately, the, price, the prices were still the same, and we ordered the same, same exact amount of food. So the bill was $100. The difference this time is I had more money. I made some really lucrative investments that week, and I had a million dollars in my pocket, and so did Rita. Um, Donald also had, uh, had $2 million. He doubled, his, he doubled his money in that one week. So Donald had $2 million. I had a million. Rita had a million. Our values went up. We doubled, our values doubled. When we split up the bill, did the bill double? No. The bill was still the same because the bill was $100 split up 50%, 25%, and 25%. And that's really how the assessment function works for taxes. The assessment function is only one of two components of your individual taxes. The the taxes are determined by municipal, county, school budgets. And you combine all of that together and you get to this bottom line figure. And then it gets divided by all of the assessments combined. So to use the dinner analogy, the taxes was the $100, the price of the meal. All of the assessments were the amount of money that we had in our pockets. The, amount of, the total amount of our municipality that we had, it was in our, the first week it was a million, it was $2 million, because we had one million and then two million between Rita and I. What you're holding in your hand, the front page, is essentially your bill. We went out to dinner, the whole city went out to dinner together. We got a, went to a nice place. The bill was $28.4 million. That's that yellow star. That yellow star has absolutely nothing to do with your assessments. Um, that's the bill. That was the lobster, that was the shrimp, that was the, uh, the champagne that I had, and the taco salad that Donald had. The blue star here represents the net valuation of your entire municipality. That's 2017. 
That's what, when you add up all of the assessments in 2017, that's what it equaled, 1.34 billion, 1.368 billion. When you divide the amount of, the amount that has to be raised, so whether it's $100 or whether it's $28.4 million, you divide that by the value of your municipality, that's the multiplier that needs to be used to apply to each individual assessment. It's very easy to say, when you have three people, to say, okay, 50%, uh, 25%, 25%, but when you're dealing with uh, 4,500 properties, you actually have, you have to split it up. You can't say, okay, you pay 0.0001%, you pay 0.002%. Uh, it has to be split up with a multiplier. So you apply that multiplier to your individual assessment and that's, that's what your fair apportionment is, assuming that the value of your property is accurate and everyone else's is accurate. If you flip to the next page, on the backhand side of that, it shows you exactly how those, those numbers work. Yellow and blue, when you mix them together, you make green. Um, 28.4 divided by the 1.368 billion is the, your tax rate. That's the tax rate that was applied to your individual assessment in 2017. 2018 comes along. The city uh, is, the, the market is very strong in the city. I think we can, we can all probably agree to that. Uh, and I, I have to, every year, reanalyze that table how much money does each person have in their pocket at the table of that dinner table? In this case, it's what is the value of each individual property? So that the bill, that $28.4 million, could be split up fairly. Uh, you may have some areas, uh, just like in that example with Rita and I, uh, maybe, I didn't, I, maybe I made uh, more money and I had a I had million dollars in my pocket and Donald had a million and, and Rita still only had 500. It would be split up accordingly. Rita would actually end up paying less, assuming the price of the dinner was the same. If you go down to the bottom section, if the taf tax levy was stagnant from 2017 to 2018, so realistically, we need to understand what would, you know, you want to try to gather what would your individual tax impact be. I have no idea what the tax levy would be for 2018. I have nothing to do with the tax levy for 2018. That's a combination, you flip to the front page, combination of all of these budgets here. Now, assuming it was the same, because this meeting is about the distribution of that levy, whether the levy is $10 or $28.4 million, it needs to be distributed fairly. If the levy was the same, with the higher net valuation of the municipality, the tax rate would be 1.732 as opposed to 2.08. So it's effectively, it's exactly 20% less. The tax rate would be 20, assuming a sa the same levy, the tax rate would be 20% lower. And I know that's for sure because the net valuation of the municipality has increased by 20%. So flip over to the next, the next page as an example. Assuming the same figures, we have my friend Rick's house. And Rick's house, his assessment, he used to be assessed for $500,000. He got his little postcard this year that showed his 2018 assessment and he freaked out. He said, how the heck did my house go up $100,000? Does that mean I'm gonna proportionately pay more taxes? I used to pay $10,400. Am I gonna have to pay uh, 11,000, 12,000, 13,000, what does this actually mean? Well, you follow the same procedure above. The tax rate will, assuming the same levy, will proportionately go down. So you have Rick, Rick's assessment at 500,000 in 2017, paying 10,4. 2018, if you apply the 1.73 to tax rate, uh, his taxes will be 10392 It's actually $8 less. So, of course, he's in the picture here celebrating, and 
leaving the New Jersey portal because the taxes are actually, they're still too high. Uh, moving along to another state or something where things are cheaper. The next uh, seven or eight pages is, uh, and the backside of that, this is stuff that's available on our city's website. Um, and it's also the same exact letter that was mailed to 3,500 uh, property owners here in the city. Uh, along with that, which explains exactly what I'm talking about here, um, probably in a little bit less detail and with a little bit less, uh, less cartoon characters uh, on handouts. This other sheet is my most important document. The frequently asked questions. So many people here have questions that are on this sheet already. And I get so many phone calls that people will ask me the questions that are exactly on this sheet. So I mailed this to all of those property owners and I hope that you received it in the mail and you read through it in full. It is a little bit lengthy. I tend to, tend to um, put a lot of detail in, in the documents that I put out. Uh, I don't want there to be any mistakes. I don't want it to be misunderstood uh, by anyone, assuming they read the whole thing. Um, read through this when you leave tonight, when you do it now. It um, doesn't matter. Whenever you want to read through it, you read through it. And it's going to tell you what to do if you disagree with your assessment. Because let's face it, your assessment is, uh, is done by me. I, I produce the assessments statistically uh, on a neighborhood level, uh, on a condo building level. I analyze the sale prices of, uh, of similar types of properties and I don't do it on an individual basis. I personally was not inside your house. I don't know personally, maybe some of you I do. Um, I don't know personally what the inside of your house looks like. We have 4,500 properties that need to be reassessed every year and um, it, this is, it's done on a, on a modeling basis. The next packet in your handout here is, and we're very close to the Q&A, so gear up your questions and um, get ready to go up to the microphone. This, this packet here is available on the, uh, on the city's website. It's the 2018 reassessment report. Uh, I started making this last year, uh, I think, because there's so many changes happening, I think it's appropriate for me to, uh, to explain from a, a bird's eye view changes, uh, why there are changes, and, um, and how those changes are going to impact properties. The backside page uh, shows you statistically that the more, as we started annually reassessing, the assessments, meaning the distribution of that bill, are more accurate. Uh, you could statistically measure it. The Division of Taxation puts out something called the coefficient of variation every year. That's a fancy statistical term for to determine how tightly clustered the assessments are to the average ratio. Um, it explains how how close how how accurate the distribution of the tax levy is. That's what this is about. This is not about if your taxes, if the taxes are too high, if the taxes are too low. This is about if the distribution of the taxes is accurate. Um, a lower coefficient of variation means a better distribution of taxes. Historically, in Asbury Park, the coefficient of variation was 24.5%. Going back, taking from 1991 all the way to 2013. 24.5%. Now we're averaging about thir uh, 13, 10, 9 um, since we started annually reassessing. I expect that it will become more and more accurate as time goes on because you have uh, the same person that is analyzing the neighborhoods, analyzing the, um, the properties, the condo associations to determine what the market value is. So it's market value being folded over again and again and again year after year after year. Therefore, the values will become closer and closer to market value and better and better tax distribution. Asbury Park had a big problem before we started doing this. 
and you may not have even realized it because personally you felt your assessment stay the same and you may have looked at your assessment and said I am so under assessed I am never going to call that tax assessor you may have actually been over assessed because in the old system before we started assessing properties at market value there's this there's this number in the background called uh, director's ratio uh, the director's ratio analyzes on a whole municipality level how close are the assessments to market value in the past what happened what happened here what happens all over the state with that in towns that are not annually reassessing is the analysis is done in, a, in any particular year they'll pay an outside contractor typically hundreds of thousands of dollars to revalue the properties and they will set the values uh, to set the tax distribution in that specific year and that will remain the way that it gets distributed for the next several years in some cases that's decades Jersey City they haven't revalued their properties in 27 or 28 years uh, here we didn't have a revaluation between I think 2002 and 2014 well a lot of this room has been here between those years and the distribution of taxes was based off of how things were in 2002. Let's think about that. 2002, Cookman Avenue, a lot of it was still boarded up. So as time went on and Cookman Avenue appreciated at a greater rate than, and I'm not trying to pick on anyone from Cookman Avenue here, but as it, as it appreciated at a greater rate, the tax distribution never reflected that. So you had properties throughout the city effectively subsidizing Cookman Avenue because Cookman Avenue assessments were not reflective of the same level of, uh, of, of uh, ratio than the rest of the city. Um, the Southwest, a lot of the Southwest was grossly over assessed for years. They were paying, some of them were paying double what their taxes should have been. Uh, and the reason is because they didn't appreciate as fast as the rest of the city did. So the distribution of taxes never reflected that because no analysis was done throughout that over a decade period. The waterfront, look what's going on in the waterfront now. Um, I star, I'm sure they're not happy with me, but I have shifted a lot of the tax burden onto them. As there's more, as there's more sales data of uh, vacant land in in redevelopment areas, whether they're selling it or it's comparable areas in Long Branch, there's now um, there's now a much better argument to have those assessments higher. And as the years go on, and this probably could continue, more tax burden would be shifted onto that, especially as they develop. Uh, their assessments went from 55 million to about 92 million this year. So a lot of tax burden shifted onto them. That's probably equivalent of five hundred to seven hundred thousand dollars of taxes that now they would pay that you don't have to pay. Uh, the next page there is about the 2018 reassessment, and this talks about the accuracy of the new assessments. Uh, that scatter diagram is a diagram of all of the uh, uh, assessment to sale price ratios 2017. Uh, you could see the percentage change on the following page and just a very interesting look at the market appreciation in the city. Now the appreciation or depreci dep uh, depreciation of a municipality is not the only thing that's factored into the net value of a municipality. You may have new construction, you may have um, you know, houses being demoed, uh, renovations, all of this is going to factor into that final number. Uh, in our case, we're going, and these are just rateable assessments. So we're going from, uh, in 2014, from $1.18 billion to $1.643. Uh, just in one year, that's 20% higher. The next sheet is paired sales analysis. It's an, another interesting look at just a few uh, few sales of properties that sold uh, just a couple years ago and without any renovations sold again in 2016 or 2017. And what you'll find there is 
really um, spectacular appreciation of those individual properties, which you should be very happy if you've been an owner here for the past five, six years, because your properties have experienced uh, some degree of appreciation. Uh, obviously, every place is different here. Every area of the city could be different, but um, on average, we're talking about 13% per year appreciation. It's unheard of. I wish I had property here. I don't. Um, this sheet here is uh, in a look at really who, how many properties are going up in relation to that baseline of 20%. Effectively, if your assessment went up 20%, you will pay the same proportionate share of, the of next year's tax levy as you did this year. If your assessment went up less than 20%, your assessment may have gone up 10% and you may be freaking out, but uh, realistically your taxes would go down next year. Even though your assessment's up 10%, uh, your taxes would go down because the rate is gonna be much lower next year. Again, I don't know exactly what the rate would be, but it'll definitely be lower. Uh, about 65% of the properties in the municipality are gonna pay a lesser proportionate share of taxes in 2018 than they did in 2017. Are you looking at the chart? The chart on the last page, and there's assessment changes. When, that, when we get to, the, we're about to start the Q&A and then go up front, so this way it goes onto, uh, onto the mic. Uh, the back page, of course, is my contact information. And some of you may have questions after today. And send me an email or call me. I'm in the office on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, I kind of switch things around this week because I'm here tonight. So I won't be there tomorrow. I'll be back next Tuesday. Uh, if you send me an email, I typically respond to that email within uh, a few hours, if not the same hour, regardless of what day I'm here. Uh, same thing with voicemails. I get all of my voicemails on my email. I have access to that no matter where I am, and I will respond to your voicemail no matter where I'm at uh, within, within the next day or so. Uh, let's, let's start with the Q&A, and, &A and uh, you want to jump up there and ask your question first, since you already started? And then anyone else that has further questions, just line up behind. So as a, as a person whose assessment has gone up 40 something percent, it just seems if you're gonna create a document like this and give a, a full page example of a person, I guess, happy that their taxes are going down, when most people's taxes are not going down, that seems pretty disingenuous. It, from this chart, it looks like most people's taxes are going up, even though the rate is going down. Uh, that's not, not correct. What that, what that uh, hand, in the handout, what this is, is somebody whose assessment is changing exactly what the baseline is. I used exactly 20%. The reason that you see an $8 difference is because the assessments have changed by 20.06%. So that's why I'm not using an example. I'm using an example of somebody that- What's the most that common example? What's I'm using, the most common example in town? Well, um, actually less than this. Now, your second question was about the amount of properties that are going up versus going down. There's actually more properties, uh, significantly more properties that are going down in relation to the baseline than going up. That's that- uh, the I, don't, assessment. I don't really care what the, the assessment, assessment is. Are in most relation people to the in baseline. town, are their taxes going up or down? Well, look, I have no control over the tax levy. I didn't ask you So that. I have- Are most people in the town, are their annual taxes going up or down? You've made, you've made most a document. People, okay. Most people's proportionate share of the tax levy is going down. Okay, that's not what I'm asking. I don't know. The tax I, don't, I don't have the answer know. to your question. You do know. I do not. I have no idea what next year's tax levy is. It's the same, the same analogy as when we go out to dinner, and I don't know what that bill is. Is the bill $100 or is the bill $105? Is it $110? That will affect how many people's taxes go up or go down. I have no control over that portion of your, of your, your taxes. The only portion I control is the distribution of your taxes. If your assessment went up 35%, your 
you will likely pay more taxes next year. And you don't know overall whether more people I have no idea. Have no idea. No, I, no, I do know for sure that more people will pay a lesser proportionate share. And we don't know what the bill is. We don't know what the, we don't know what the, we don't know what the bill is. Hopefully next year it's less. Hopefully next year it was it was a and lower when we, number. When do we know that? Uh, unfortunately, you won't know that until next uh, June, July. Now, I'll, I will say this, and this has nothing to do with my assessments, but the state is on transition, or the city's on transitional aid from the state, and the reason that the the uh, the tax levy has gone up in the municipality is because the state is weaning the city off of the transitional aid. I don't know the exact number. I'm sure somebody here does. Maybe it's a half a million. That so when when they're when you're fully off transitional aid, hopefully that's next year. Then you you may start to see decreases in your in your tax levy. I I don't know. That has again that has nothing to do with my assessments. You want to. Yeah. All right. Just one last thing. Do you believe that an assessment should be what, if a sale closes, should the assessment be the closing price? Yes. It should be. So Amy Quinn, for example, for the past five years, has her assessment has been under her closing price when she bought three years ago. Until yeah. now, it's been under that. The, the assessments are done on a statistical basis. And um, there's always going to be outliers on the high side, on the low side. I can cherry pick. Uh, multiple examples on one side or on the other side of the bell curve, and there's always going to be outliers. The only for recourse sure. is litigation. You're not willing to sit with homeowners. There's not that many Absolutely. who are objecting beforehand and adjust what you're doing, or just well, get to litigation. Call him first. Yes. Yeah, but, but, yeah. So when you read the FAQ, make adjustments right. not through litigation. Well, when you read the F when you read the FAQ, um, if you own a residential property, I'm interested in if my data is on your individual property is is accurate. Uh, if we didn't get inside uh, and we don't know the condition, I happen to know the condition of your property. Do. So it hasn't changed in four years, but now we're 50% more in assessment. Um, the last closed well, sale, so let 950. Me let 950 me is the last closed sale. You assess this at 135. Mm -hmm. Let me finish I'm answering the question, because what the question was is more rel related to, sure. the, to the public here and what to do if they, if, they don't like, if they don't agree with their assessment. They don't think they could sell their house for that. Um, what you want to do is you want to contact me. What they can sell their house for is not what we're talking about. Yeah, you're talking about how to file an appeal or if there's, an, if there's another avenue. So let me address it. So what you want to do is you want to get a copy of your property record card. And your property record card uh, shows all of the detailed components of your house. And on that property record card, it's going to show you the square footage of your house, the size, uh, the, the dimensions of the house. And what's very important here is the condition of your house and if there's a finished basement or not a finished basement. All of that is going to factor into my opinion of market value through the, my model. And if we uh, incorrectly have a finished basement on your property, and you don't have a finished basement, uh, if we have that your house is renovated, and, and we have that it's renovated and it's not renovated, that's not appropriately designated on my record. If you were to call me I would, and say, I disagree with this component, I would come out to your house, I would inspect it, I had three of them this week, and I would say, you know what, if, if you're right, if I agreed with you, this could go both ways, of course. If I agree with you, I would say it should be not listed as above average or excellent condition, whatever, whatever I have on the record, it should be lower. So I would change it, I would file an assessor appeal. If something is factually wrong on my record, as long as this is done before January 15th, after January 15th, the appeal deadline, I have no ability to make this type of correction. You have no ability to challenge the assessment at all. So if, it, if this happens before January 15th and we find that there's something inaccurate on your property record card, I would file an assessor appeal and I would change it. You would not have to go through any litigation uh, in that case. The flip of that is you may call me and I may say, I believe your assessment is accurate and or in some cases too low. Uh, you would have to file an appeal. You would have to produce the evidence that you believe that it's too low after I inspected your house and everything. We would go through the same process. And um, if your assessment 
if you can produce sales that support uh, your your that your assessment is too is too high, then you would go in front of the, the tax board commissioners. You would present your case. I would present my case to defend the assessment, uh, and then the tax board commissioners would decide. So there is a process in place if you disagree with it. Uh, in some cases, I get questions: Could my assessment go up? Uh, yeah, technically it, it could. The goal here is to fairly distribute the taxes, and if you file an appeal, um, let's just use an extreme example. You're assessed for um, $100,000 and you just bought it for $150,000 like two weeks ago. You're definitely assessed too low. Um, you file an appeal, you go in front of the tax board. The tax board is going to be scratching their head and saying, what are you in here saying that your assessment is too high? You just bought it for $50,000 more than your assessment. I mean, that's an extreme example where we have data on the individual house. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be data on the individual house. I have I had two assessments this year that actually filed appeals. It was in um, uh, in Asbury, and one of them, and it got increased. Uh, the, the assessment did get increased. So make sure that you uh, you take a look and objectively take the emotion out of it. I understand this is emotional. Take the emotion out of it and look at your assessment. Is does this new number represent market value? How do I know that? How do I know it represents market value? Open up Zillow. Zillow is a great tool. <laughs> Most assessors don't tell you to do this. Open up Zillow, put on uh, recently sold on the map, and take a look at what houses have sold for. Click on the houses, flip through the pictures, and does the, is it a similar condition house than yours? Is it, if, it's, if you live in the Northwest, don't look at comps in the Southwest. Don't look at comps on the East. In the East, look at comps in the Northwest uh, even, especially, even if you're on 4th Avenue, look for comps near 4th Avenue. Don't look on 1st Avenue. You, know, you guys know, the, the, for the most part, the delineations of, the, of, mark, of value here. And uh, you know where the differences are, where you cross over certain streets or certain areas, where value is higher, where value is lower. If you're on the lake, uh, you know, of course your value is higher. The house would, would sell more if it wasn't on, uh, than if it wasn't on the lake. So you have to look at all of this information uh, before, you, before you determine if you, just, if you want to file an appeal or not. The appeal is not about your taxes, it's about your assessment. You want to make sure your assessment's fair. Eric, my, my question is more related to uh, commercial tax base. So you brought up the and I'm not going to pick on Cookman Avenue. I think I'll pick on iStar because they can take it. Um, you, you brought up the example of iStar, you know, uh, an assessment where, uh, you know, from 55 million to 95 million, whatever it may be. And, you know, and that sounds like a pretty big increase, but as, you know, for all I know, I don't know how equitable that may be. You know, in other words, mm -hmm. we seem to have high taxes for a city that has such a vibrant commercial tax base. Now, you know, I'm not an expert at this. I imagine there were probably incentives done over the last 10 years as investors came in and, and developers and everything. But, you know, I don't, first of all, we don't need to do those incentives anymore, obviously, to bring this kind of investment into this city. How long do they continue? Because, you know, my question is how equitable is it where still the homeowners are really covering the, the, the majority of the, uh, or an, an inequitable amount of the tax base with such a big commercial tax base in the city? Sure, That's a, it's a great question. I'm no uh, expert in redevelopments. Uh, I'm essentially an appraiser. I have, or a, a data analyst. I have. Uh, I don't have an answer for you about when things are good to give abatements or tax incentives, or when things are bad. I really have no idea. What my job is is to digest the current data of sale prices and to apply that data to what things are worth. iStar. It's interesting that you said that they're commercial property owners, but. Honestly, they really don't own that much commercial property. Most of the property that they own is actually vacant land or parking lots. Uh, technically, a parking lot is, is commercial, but there's not a heck of a lot of, um, of buildings under, their, under what they own, uh, other than the, the Asbury Hotel. That's the, really the only big uh, building that I can think of that they actually own. Uh, everything else is just, it's just land. And yes, absolutely, land on the waterfront is gonna be worth more than land that's not on the waterfront, completely agree. And again, my job is to painstakingly analyze this data. And to analyze data comparable to iStar properties, I look outside of Asbury because the data is scarce. 
in Asbury. They, they have um, some sales themselves to like Hayhob, for example, other than, of vacant land. Other than that, uh, I have to look at sales in Long Branch and I have to effectively convert the sales of Long Branch to make them Asbury Park to see what, would, what should these pieces of land realistically be worth. Um, there needs to be an understanding that when you're doing that type of analysis, market value is difficult because there's a very wide range when you don't have uh, a lot of data of the exact same thing that's sold. Asbury Park provi uh, provides me quite a bit of a challenge, whether it's uh, re uh, residential houses or, or vacant land on the, um, on the waterfront. Even with the residential houses, you don't have the same exact house that's sold uh, right down, you know, two blocks away, and it's the same exact thing, same exact condition, and that there was, you know, plenty of market exposure for buyers and sellers to uh, create this market of what is what is this property worth, where there the market value would be a much tighter range. Um, the extreme comparison would be something like Asbury, where the range would be very wide. Is something worth? Uh, 500,000 or is it worth 550,000 or, or 560,000? It's difficult to make that determination. Uh, if you're looking, and then the, the comparison, the extreme other end is something like Tinton Falls. I like to pick on Tinton Falls because I grew up there. And they have a lot of condos in Tinton Falls, a lot of townhomes. Um, you have Fox Chase and Park Place where, uh, especially in Fox Chase, you have the same exact units that could be on the market at the same time. And the buyers and sellers can easily digest that an end unit in Fox Chase that's this particular model will sell for between 220 and 240,000, depending on if it has a renovated kitchen or a renovated bathroom. And you can really boil it down to a very close degree of this is, uh, you have a, a very tighter, much tighter range of this market value. Asbury's difficult. And what really brought this question up is about iStar properties. The vacant land on the, in the waterfront is difficult to digest, the, the data, and um, I analyze it to the best of my ability to make them, make the assessments represent fair market value. I think that I've done a, a decent job doing so. I actually outsourced some of that work to our appraiser in the city uh, to make sure that uh, the way that I'm analyzing it is the way that somebody else would analyze it. And I star all of their vacant land, their taxable vacant land was, uh, was, set from, was set from 55 million to 92 million this year. Two years ago, I increased them by 45%. We didn't have a meeting like this because your assessments didn't change by 20% or so. Uh, you know, maybe you only went up four or 5% while I star took on a much greater burden uh, at that point. So over the last five years, as annual reassessments have been happening, uh, all of this, everything is boiling down to your individual taxes. However, you don't see each individual piece that's going into that. And part of that soup is absolutely, iStar has taken on a much greater burden than they have in the past. And uh, we'll see if, if time, as time goes on, if that continues, if that trend continues, that's great for homeowners. Okay, so um, I have a few questions, but they all revolve around how much is enough. Um, Asbury Park had a budget surplus last year. It's projected to have a budget surplus this year. And the question really is, why was this reevaluation necessary? So let's go back to the I-Star question, and let's go back to your own statistics. Um, you want a coefficient of deviation to go down. That was your point, right? It's more accurate. The coefficient of deviation, according to your own records, went up 50%, so that we're less efficient this year than we are last year. And also, the concept, let's just go to the concept for a second. The concept is that we as homeowners would like to stay in our homes. And we as homeowners may see our value of our home go up. We don't see any of that money until we're forced to sell our home, right? And so therefore, if our taxes go up because the valuations go up, because as you pointed out here, you may or may not have a 1.7 or whatever it is percent, right? It might be 2%, two, 2%. Two council can decide whatever they want, right? They can decide whatever budget surplus they need. 
So it's not necessarily going to be exactly like this, right? And so, first part of the question, right? Um, and I'll give you the same example as you gave us, which is the Southwest. If you're in the Southwest and you see your taxes go up a lot, you can least afford it. I can, I can afford it, my taxes to go up. Someone in the Southwest may not be able to, and they may actually have to leave Asbury and then have, who may have lived here their whole lives, and have someone else come in. So again, A, why did the coefficient of deviation go up? B, what's the effect on the homeowners? And C, with I star. Well, let's do one sorry, at a time. Okay, sure. And, All right, so the coefficient, yeah, yeah. I, I actually, I, I think uh, there were some things in the beginning, beginning I wanted to address, but let's sure. just go, let's go straight with the questions. Yep. And then if I don't address one of them, then you let me know. Um, coefficient of deviation. Taking one individual year is the same, same thing as cherry picking one individual house that, uh, that sold for much higher, much lower than my assessment. Um, that's one year. And again, you have to really statistically look at it and look at um, over, a, over a longer period of time. And if you compare 2017, the, the um, coefficient of deviation to the median or the average coefficient of deviation between 1991 and 2013, before we started any sort of reassessment for more fair tax distribution, uh, it's 24.5%. So with a 14.14% coefficient of deviation, it's actually um, significantly more accurate than what the expectation of the past is, or was. Uh, something that... But not that much difference in 1994, and actually if you take 2002, to 2013, the coefficient of deviation basically remained the same, whereas your coefficient of deviation um, deviated by more than 50% almost in every year. Sorry. Well, those are, yeah, the years that you pointed out. Anyway, let's, let's go back to it. The, year, the years that you pointed out are actually the worst years on record for Asbury Park. That's when the, uh, the tax distribution here in the city was so inaccurate. Um, it was in dire need of, of uh, reassessment, revaluation. Uh, I'm looking for the sheet with the coefficients. Uh, but okay, 2000, here. Here. here we go. I got it. It's the last one I look at. Yeah. So, the, so from 2002, you're looking at 24%, 29%, 32, 34, 29, 27, 25. It's not a matter of if it stayed the same. Those are, those are absurd numbers from a, from a statistical standpoint that uh, the coefficient that to be at thir in the 30s. Uh, that's really Jersey City right now. The, di the distribution of tax is not going through re of revaluation for uh, 27 years. Their coefficient's about 37%. And that's really, this is exactly why we need to reassess. It's to provide that more fair distribution. But I would, I would say that this only benefits people who buy now. In other words, if you bought in 2017, your tax rate was 2%. If you buy in 2018, your tax rate is 1.7%. So great, anybody who knew who comes in, they get the benefit of all of this stuff. Yeah. Whereas my valuation went up, and I don't really get the benefit of all of this. No, every the year- The point of this really Well, hold on, is, just to sorry. correct that, because every year, everybody pays the same rate. It doesn't matter when you bought it. Uh, that has nothing to do, when you bought it, has nothing to do with what the tax rate is. The tax rate, everybody pays the same tax rate. Right. But if and I don't assess properties individually. This one sold for this, I'm going to change this house. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Everybody will move in accordance with the market. We as Asbury residents sort of look at it, I think, then tell me if I'm wrong, slightly differently. As, as Asbury grows and as Asbury gets more prosperous, right, the people coming in paying the top dollar for that, yes, they're paying more taxes and thank God they are, right? So that the rest of us who have lived in Asbury Park and watched it grow and been with it, rather than coming in at the last second, no, it's not wrong. It is wrong. <laughs> but you, come on. That's exactly why the rate will be much lower next year. Come on, answer that question. Yeah. So, you want to go up and, and yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Come and as long as everyone lets you cut them. So, but yes, yeah, but no, you, no. you are incorrect because what would happen is everybody's, uh, the, the rate will come down. As, other, as people come in here, and I just, uh, I just heard a place no, on no, no, fourth. No, no, I'm saying if you don't reassess. If right? you don't so, reassess. So, I lived in, yeah, I lived for years. so here, let me, let me tell you what would happen if we didn't reassess. Yeah. If we didn't reassess, your taxes would be higher right now. On residential residential properties, for the most part, your taxes would be higher because over the past uh, three, 
four, four to three to four years as I started reassessing, I have pulled a significant amount of tax burden off of the residential class and has been placed on, uh, unfortunately for the Cookman Avenue properties here, uh, the Cookman Avenue properties have gone, have gone up. Um, I-Star has gone up. Waterfront properties have gone up. Certain condos probably have gone up. Um, but, but for I the most part, gone up enough average, the, point, wait, wait, the, average pro the average property would yep. be paying more in taxes today than they would if we didn't do any reassessments in the past three years. I'm certain of that. Okay. So if you left residential alone and you had just done commercial reassessment, then <laughs> that would have been so. Yeah, so let's talk about I-Star just for they, a second. They would be very unhappy about that. Well, okay. Well, I-Star would be and I-Star should. The point is if I-Star just sits on land and the land stays vacant and doesn't build on it, right, then we all pay more. Because as, if they are forced to build on something, the tax base goes up, their taxes go up, and us as residential owners, tax bases, go down. Yeah. So obviously they haven't been hurt enough to actually build anything. This isn't about hurting I Star. This and isn't so a, this is not about hurting I Star. Huh? And this is not about hurting I Star. Is this is okay, sorry, this sorry. is about this is about fairly distributing the taxes. And a lot of what you're saying, if the if there is more development, yes, the 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 assessments would be higher. But that's not that has nothing to do with me or the assessments. No, 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 that's redevelopment saying, questions. Would it okay what is I Star's Development. Sorry. What is ISAR's taxes? How on their on their blocks on their on their? Uh, um, well, again, we don't know what the tax rate is, but their assessments of uh, of but all I'm the saying, rateable property. Aren't they property? trying to sell the city part? Of, uh, they valued. I can't remember where it was. I mean, some tell you it's like there was eight million dollars something like that. They wanted to value uh, Bradley, Bradley Cove. Bradley Cove. Right. So they valued it at eight million. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're valuing, and that's vacant, right? And you're valuing theirs at something like three million. Yeah, actually, Bradley Cove is an interesting uh, piece because that's that's right of way on the city of the cities, uh, and the reason that that has a higher valuation is the same reason that 1101 Ocean is much higher than the neighboring block because they have the approvals to build. Uh, approvals to build is really where a lot of value comes in, and I increased uh, 1101 Ocean. You familiar with that? Yep. 1101 Ocean. The assessment changed in one year. From five million dollars to fifteen point seven five million dollars, and uh, what changed there? That they got the approvals. So they got I approvals to build. To build? build What's that? I Star does not have permission to build. They don't have approvals on any other lots. If they get approvals, I will appropriately assess that based on the approvals for sure. Uh, the Monroe before they built, you could look look back at last year's assessments or this year, and you'd see that that was uh, proportionately higher than other lots because that had approvals. They had approvals to build the 34 units or whatever it was. So I appraised that based on a per unit, a per approved unit basis. That's how 1101 Ocean is. Unfortunately, Bradley Cove, that's not land that's even accessible. That's a, uh, that's a public right of way. There's nothing to assess there. But it's assessed at 8 million. That's what they want to sell it for, right? No, that's their appraisal. That's their appraisal. Okay, so. If and I don't. I never seen that appraisal. I. I. I you're, I'm just relying on what you're saying. I've never seen that appraisal. Um, I. I don't know about it. Okay. Um, Eric, there's nothing in this packet nor on the website about pilot programs. I don't know if there's anybody else in this room that's in a pilot program, but I'm sure in the TV audience there is. Can you explain what's going to? Why you're changing assessments? in a pilot program where the basis for the tax is fixed for 15 years. Um, so I actually I have nothing to do with pilot programs. We, we've had this conversation yeah, at least. we did. I, I, I have nothing to do with the pilot programs. Um, what I do have to do with is the assessed values of properties and the uh, whether it's a rateable or not. So pilot programs, my involvement in that is strictly to track the timeline of when it's exempt from taxes, because that's exactly what they are to me. Exe they're exempt, and when it comes back onto the taxable list, uh, an exempt exempt property means uh, this property that we're standing in. It's not calculated in the rateable base. It's not part of this 1.6 billion dollars of rateables. Um, pilot properties are in that category. They're like a church. A church is not a rateable property. No, now, because my the church doesn't pay taxes. I'm correct. paying taxes. Correct. You can't come equivocate the two to a church, please. Un un 
that's Actually, a bad you example. Don't, you don't pay, technically speaking, you don't pay taxes. You pay a pilot payment and a special Tell assessment. Tell my mortgage company that. I, well, I, I, I hear you. taxes, believe I me. I hear you. That's probably what they're calling it. Technically, that's not what it is. It's not, it's not taxes. It's a pilot payment. By definition, it's not taxes. Payment but it's based in lieu on of taxes. the sale price of the original sale, correct? Your, your uh, agreement, which again, I am not, uh, I'm not the, this is really questions for the redevelopment attorneys uh, or probably because they'll, they can explain to you your individual agreement. But my understanding is your, agree, your agreement, you're in North, Va, North Va, Beach. North, oh, you're in North Beach. Yeah. Oh, okay. North Beach has absolutely nothing to do with my assessment. Um, you're, you pay based off. I of, got an assessment card. We went up to that. So yeah, you're, why, you're, that's my question. Why are you doing that? Well, it has nothing to do with it. Why are you saying okay? So my cards? my statutory responsibility when I conduct a reassessment, I have to I have to conduct a reassessment for the entire district. That means that I re I I change the value of the property that we're standing in. Even I change the value of everything. When I analyze the sales in North Beach, as mundane as it sounds. Uh, I spent several hours analyzing the, the sales in North Beach and adjusting the assessments in North Beach that are on the exempt list, even though it, ap it ap actually has no impact on what you're paying um, in, your, in your pilot payment. Because your pilot payment is based off of what your individual purchase price was times, a sep times this rate in the, in the, uh, that the municipality has in their agreement. Your rate in your agreement, just because I'm familiar with it, it started at twelve dollars per thousand of your purchase price in two thousand nine. Every year, that rate changed based on uh, what the percentage change in the tax levy was. That's my next question. The, per, the tax levy has nothing to do with my the assessments. Tax levy or the tax rate? The tax levy has nothing to do with my assessments. The tax rate is a combination taking the uh, assess the all of the amount of money that the city has to raise divided by the all of the rate no, amounts. I, I That's how you that. get the tax rate. Your, your, is, your thing is not connected to the rate, it's connected to the levy. The, uh, the percentage increase so the in percentage your rate. the percentage increase is based on the overall levy with the county correct. and the school. Exactly, the exactly, county. exactly. Okay, and then what happens when the pilot agreement expires? When your pilot agreement expires, you'll be taxed the same way that everybody else, well, I don't know about everybody here, some other people may have pilot agreements, but um, you, they, you would, your taxes would be based off your, the value of your property times the tax, the tax rate for that so perspective. Uh, you, I, I don't know. It depends on when you purchased it. I don't know what you pay. 2007. Yeah, you'd have to look at 2007. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't know. Maybe with your sale price in 2007, you have a high sale price. I don't know. I'm not necessarily so sure. Well, depends based on, on yeah, the assessment the card, the sales price is about. Wait till the know. tax rate is, um, is certified for next year. And then look at look at what my assessment is on the exempt list. Multiply it by the tax rate. That would tell you what you would have paid in conventional taxes this year. And that's the year that it expires. It'll jump immediately. Yeah, to you, that I don't point. think you you probably don't expire. You well, if you bought in two thousand seven, no, fifteen years. Yeah, you're you would be fi no fifteen years from January first, two thousand nine. So yeah, they redid it. it. So it's twenty twenty four. They redid it in two thousand nine. So yeah, it went so fifteen years from that. Twenty yeah twenty well twenty twenty four. You know, I'm going to have an move. influx of people from North Beach that are that are that are finally interested in what their assessments are. So, you know, we'll Time we'll to move to iStar. We'll. <laughs> I'm not in Long Branch. <laughs> Hi, Eric. Um, I'm trying to figure out. I know you say to focus on the assessment and not the taxes, and you say also to look at comps in your neighborhood and even on your block. And I'm having trouble understanding um, my situation in relative to a couple sales that happened on my block. Um, there, were, there were two sales that were significantly priced. Can I, I just, I, before, sure. I, I'm going to let you go on, but um, I really don't want to use this forum to get into individual circumstances. Uh, I'm going to answer your no, question, yes. but so I'll ask I just want to, yes. I, 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 honestly, I wish I said it beforehand. I really don't want to get into the individual circumstances. You know, we could deal with that on, in my office. You could send me an email, send, you know, send me, uh, call me, give me a voicemail. I'll call you back, however you want to do it. But, you know, let's use this forum to help everybody. I hope that this question is, I'm sure we can. Yes, uh, I'll, I'll give you the specifics, um, and then you can answer it broadly. Sure. So my, my home went up um, around $400,000 based on your professional appraisal. And there were two home sales on my street that are, one is assessed 150000 less than a recent sale, and one 100000 less than a recent sale. So when you say it's based on fair market value, what is more fair market value than an arm's length transaction of, of an actual sale? 
Why yeah, would they be? Uh, why would they be assessed so much less? Again, I mean, you could cherry pick uh, sales. Uh, if you want me to open up my computer, I'll find you sales of houses that I have the assessment over this over the recent sale price. Um, the yeah, goal but I'm not asking what you have. I'm asking why they would be assessed so far yeah, under what they just sold for. Yeah, everything is done statistically, and it would be completely inappropriate for me to take uh, an individual sale of a house and uh, deviate from my modeling so that it's it would effectively be unfairly treated. The most important um, part of this is uniformity. So you and think a market value assessment would be treating someone unfairly? Uh, well, market value, uh, in when it comes to a modeling perspective, I'm doing things statistically. So I'm looking at entire neighborhoods statistically. And uh, let's just use a condo, a condo building. because. So you're not actually looking at fair market value? What's that? You're not looking at the fair market value? Yes, those sales that you're referring to, yeah. What, as long as they were in, within in the analysis, I don't know if they sold last last week. Obviously, the assessments were completed by then. It was, but they the were, it was over the summer. Yes, over the summer they were definitely used in the analysis. So I just I'm having trouble understanding why they wouldn't be assessed at what they sold. For. Uh, that because there's no better representation of fair market value than an arms length. Well, again, it's, sale cherry, price. it's that's cherry picking assessments or uh, particular properties. Uh, you can go to page I think page two or three. Uh, look at the scatter diagram, and statistically, you, there is, uh, let's say, statistically, the values, my new assessed values are taking, taking the past two years of sales at 102% on average, taking just the last one year of sales, I'm at about 97% um, on average. So. Uh, you know, with, that's really to no surprise to me because the market has been increasing quite a bit. If you take five years of sales, you're going to have a much higher percentage there. Um, but statistically speaking, I'm very comfortable with uh, to have the most recent year of sales with the seven percent coefficient of the of variation and um, and you know the ninety seven percent ratio on the most recent uh, year period. I, I believe that I believe that everything is statistically assessed at market value, and yes, that's why there is the appeal process. An individual could file an appeal and be too high. Absolutely, and in, you can you can find a house that is too low, and I would agree with you that it was too low. That may be the case with those. I'm not too sure, but um, that's why that's why we have the appeal process, uh, so that on an individual level you can be brought up or brought down based on. Um, an, an individual appraisal approach of that property. I'm fairly certain that was going to appeal to be brought up. I see what you're saying. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, Eric. Um, so, uh, yeah, we own three properties on Cookman Avenue, and um, we've been treated very unfairly, I think, by you. And I think your assessments are going to drive a lot of these nascent businesses out of the town you're going to force a lot of these property owners to sell their properties i mean the tax burdens that you've shifted onto the downtowns i mean why do you think there's all these residential properties coming in uh, uh, residential buildings being built because there's a vibrant downtown and you by these assessments you're putting on downtown cookman uh, uh, properties uh, i don't know whatever else you're doing on the other commercial properties is extremely unfair we own properties in multiple towns in uh, Monmouth County and in, in Jer and New Jersey, and you have put on the highest assessments of any town that we own properties in. And um, I think that it's terribly unfair. Um, your material here that you handed out, um, you have you show a tax rate of 2008 of 1.732, but that you indicate right. I think that that's not the actual rate. Correct. Or, and it, That's and it assuming might not be. stagnant levy. Right. So the uh, two, the 2016 rate, I think, was 2.144. Does that sound right? Two point, uh, 2015 was 2.214. So two that, yes, 2016 was 2.144. Then two, 2017 was 2.08. Zero. So that was a just a 3% drop between mm -hmm. 16 and 17. Correct. And in your materials here, you're showing a 20% drop to all these people here, but it very well could be another 3% drop, right? Well, no, back to this sheet. 
you could see between 2016 and 2017, the rateable base only changed between, uh, from 1.29 to 1.36. So uh, proportionately, there's, and you can even see the graphic here, there's a tremendous difference in the denominator of the calculation. Um, your, first, your first question or point about the, uh, the properties on, on Cookman, I forget what that was. What was, that, what was your question? Well, about I'm just pointing Cookman? out the, I mean, the properties that we own. In 2017, uh, one went up 59 percent, one went up 88 percent, and one went up 70 yeah. percent. Then you that could... wasn't that was that was ast astonishing. Mm -hmm. And then this year you raised uh, the one that you raised last year. You raised it 60 percent. This year you raised it 36 percent more. So between the two years, it's gone up uh, over 100 percent. The other one has gone up. All right. So I mean, basically, they've all gone up almost over 100 percent. In downtown Cookman, yeah, you know we have small. Now, if you take, wait, wait, if you, let me finish. We have small tenants that you know some pay five hundred a month, some pay eight hundred a month, some pay a little more, but they're starting these businesses, and these are mom and pop businesses. And when when you you know you get these big expenses like this, you're literally driving them out of Asbury Park. Okay, you are. You're going to be like Red Bank, where you have nine or ten vacancies down on Broad Street because everything's getting so expensive. You've got to be reasonable about this. And so it's not being it's not it's not reasonable to think that properties in two years have gone up over a hundred percent in value. And to your point, you said that the this reassessment program that you're you're saying is so great. Um, you have to every year now, right? Am I correct? You have to look at forty five hundred line items? Yes. That's, that's your job now. You didn't have to do that before, right? You didn't have to go over 4,500 lines. <laughs> of of right? everybody here who's impacted the worst is me. I actually have to do a lot more work. Uh, right. Correct. Not only, not, do you, not only do you have to do more work, but it's almost, it's almost impossible for one person to look at accurately 4,500 line items. Not with today's come technology. Up with value. You're the, doing it statistically. You're not inspecting yes. any properties. You don't know accurate square footages. And that's why we're all getting these screwed up assessments. Well. You know, statistically, you can look at the um, look at the historical from Asbury. You can statistically measure the historical from Monmouth County and look at coefficients of deviation. Uh, you could statistically look at coefficients of deviation in the rest of the state. There's uh, 16 towns that have reassessed every year for the past uh, five years that their coefficients of deviation are about six in the sixes. Uh, there's about 56 towns that reassessed every year for the past three years. Their coefficients are about, I think, seven, seven percent, seven and change. And then there's 299 towns in the rest of the state of the 565 municipalities that have done no revaluation reassessment work in the past five years. And you know what their coefficient of deviation is? It's double. They're at about 12 and a 12 and change or 13 and change. So the the coefficient is really the best way to measure if if there is accuracy within within the um, the distribution of the taxes. Your other well, point about driving I think the way that you're Bill, um, let me. I let you go. I let you go. All right. Let well, me go. I, I'm not done, but go ahead. Well, I'll let you, you. Could ask more after. Your other point about driving businesses out. It's not my my job. Um, it's not my position to be concerned about certain areas and to to try to feather things in. My goal is to uh, every year take a look and make sure that that bill is distributed fairly. Uh, I want to make sure that when we went out to dinner that night, uh, Rita, that you paid your fair share. I didn't want to feather in Donald because he went up a million dollars. Uh, you'd have to individually look at your assessment, and I believe that if you look at sale prices of similar properties, you'd be very comfortable about with your assessment. Um, whether it's going to drive businesses out, you know, I three years ago, four years ago, people told me about Bitcoin. And I did not want to buy any bitcoins. I said, "This is a big bubble. This is totally crazy." And what happened? The people keep on buying these things. Now it's like ten thousand. And you know, you're talking about hypotheticals that haven't occurred here. We're looking realistically well, no, looking at has, the sale prices. I'm getting, One I'm minute, getting Bill. calls from tenants. About We're looking it. at the sale prices that are happening in Asbury Park over the past several years that you have made the same argument to me three years ago. And what has happened here? Are businesses coming out or businesses coming in? They're coming in. Uh, people are paying insane prices for properties. The appreciation here easily outpaces all surrounding municipalities. 
So I believe that your hypothetical has actually been proven wrong. No, about, I, don't, um, I don't think so. About I that. think it's. I think it. I don't think so. I think you're. Um, go, I think you will see based on what you're doing here. I mean, downtown, downtown uh, Asbury Park. You have property that we literally bought for a hundred thousand dollars ten what? years ago, assessed for three and a half million dollars. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, let me let me ask let me ask you this: the the forty five hundred line items that you have to look at. You don't, I mean, obviously you can't. You can't inspect every property. I mean, you can't look at all the square footages. I mean, you can't just can't physically do that, I would imagine, right? Uh, so we're on a program to once every five years inspect every single property. Uh, yeah. Right now, we have inspected 80% of the town. Uh, next year, we'll be on our final piece of that, that 20% per year, so 2018 will will capture those other ones. The last time that those properties were inspected, that are going to be inspected next year, it was actually relatively recently in the revaluation, 2013, that inspection happened. So I'm pretty comfortable with the data. Again, can you cherry pick stuff that's wrong? Yes, I agree. And you know, we should uh, absolutely take a look at uh, every property here, every property owner here. Take a look at your individual, your property record card, and is the data accurate? Do we have the square footage correct? If it's not correct, we need to correct it. Uh, we need to make sure that your assessment is reflective of uh, market value within the modeling. Um, so you have to you have to equate to a budget of 28 or 29 million. Is that how you have to you have to come up with the uh, no. the rateable base and uh, you divide it by the? Um, I don't divide anything. I have I'm just I'm just saying yeah you don't compute the tax rate I know the correct. tax collector does but uh, what I'm saying is the budget is about 28 or 29 million is that 40, 42 well that was the the budget the the shortfall of the budget is effectively what the taxpayers of the city uh, have to raise through through the property taxes that amount in 2017 was 28.4 million and that's what gets distributed by my assessments. And every year, Asbury Park spends forty-two million. Is that accurate? Uh, how I, I have. I don't know. Do you, I, I, I mean, don't know do you, about the budget information. Do you know? Do you know that how many employees? Do, do you know how many employees work for? Asbury? I don't know. No. That has nothing to do. Has, I'm, I'm the appraiser for the municipality. No, I'm you just. Know, you know curious. what my position is, and you know I value the properties. Um, and that the values of the properties is what's used to distribute. The I, tax I was just trying to understand that twenty-eight million dollar number. That's it's all. it's it's not on me to explain it. I don't know. You could look at the front page. The front page has the breakdown of the twenty-eight million, mm -hmm. and um, you could see you know there's the county portion, there's a, uh, a school portion, there's a municipal portion. Um, beyond that, I, I don't know what to tell you. Well, I appreciate the forum. I just think that the. Um, the Cookman uh, commercial properties, you're just uh, unfairly assessing, and I and I uh, urge you to take it into the um, you know future consideration what the businesses of this town mean to the whole town, and I, you know I, I know they don't vote, so they might not get the fair consideration they deserve, but I think it's very important to consider that. Thank you. Thank you. Property record card is available in your office, or is there anybody else there that can get it if you're not available? Uh, yes, okay. the property record card you can actually get it online. Um, the FAQ on the back side of the FAQ, uh, there's some links there. You could also this FAQ is available on the city's website, and the city's website. Uh, if you go to this FAQ, you uh, go to, go to the city's website. I'm sorry, and click on departments, uh, finance, tax assessor. Under tax assessor, you're going to see a link to this. Click on that link, and then it'll give you this as a PDF. Email it to your friends and your family. And on the back side of this PDF, there's a, a, a link here that says, number one, the appeal link. If you want to file an appeal on your property, you click the link, and you, you go through the process of registering on the appeal website, and you put in your comparable sales and all of that at that point. The following link uh, says uh, HTTP colon slash slash OPRS. That's what's called the Open Public Records Search System, the Monmouth County. 
And you can look up the entire municipality, you can look up the entire county, you can look at everyone else's assessments because, again, when Rita and I went out to dinner, I didn't want somebody, I didn't want uh, Rita, to, I, I want to know what her assessment is. I want to know what her fair share is. So I wanted to make sure that we distributed it properly as a property owner. So all of that is available on the, on the OPRS website. You can look at everybody's assessment. You could even download it into Excel if you like Excel. Download the entire city into Excel. If you, if you type in your individual property, top left hand side, it says um, property card. That's your property record card, so you can get it online yourself. Also, if you send me an email, I can email it to you, or there's somebody in my office five days, her name's Tanisha. You, send, you call her and you, and you ask for the property record card, tell her your property, she could email you the PDF of it. When you say residential, you mean whether it's a single family, multifamily, rental, whatever, it's yeah. 4,500 individual, and you include individual uh, townhouse units as, as one unit, so is that included in that 4,500, so you're, is that what you mean? Or? Um, so a, a residential property is, well there's about, 40, about 4,500 total properties here. It's a little bit skewed because an apartment building with 30 units is only one. Um, however, a condo building with 30 units is 30. So, uh, you know, the amount of units in the city is far greater than, than 4,500. Uh, as far as the property record card goes, that is really specific to if you own, this is going to get pretty specific here, a one family, a two family, three family, or a four family house. One to four family is what's known as a class two. It's a residential, class two residential. Uh, if you own a condo, uh, I don't have the data of the property record cards on there. There's not much to show. Uh, I analyze all the condos on a spreadsheet. And if you own a condo, you want, uh, you want a list of all of the sales and all the condos. I have a PDF for that. I can send you, and Tanisha has that as well. I can send you all the sales of all the condos. And you know, if you live in, um, I don't know, the Santander in a B unit, you should be looking for sales in the B unit. Probably the ones that are higher will sell for more because they have a better view. So my assessments are properly, or um, maybe, maybe you believe it improperly, but they will take that into account that the higher you are in the building, typically the higher it would sell for. Okay. And what, what class is a five family house? Is that where you have those in there? Yeah, five family, five family is a uh, class 4C. That's a, uh, an apartment building. Anything over five units is an apartment. And the way that I value apartments and commercial properties is really based on an income approach. Uh, okay, yeah, I, buyers and... Okay. The other question I have... There's not a property record card for that. Well, there is. You could get a property record card, but the real valuation, mm -hmm. the meat and potatoes of the valuation is actually based on the, the income of the property. So I can give you your individual property. I'm not allowed to give out other people's incomes on properties, though. So I can't give you the the uh, data sheet of the income approach on someone else's uh, property. Okay. My other question generally is, my family has owned two properties in town for 50 years and it's 50 by 150 foot lot. Every year I, I went back into my records, the land assessment was the same for both. The past couple of years, the land assessment went up for the one house. Even though nothing changed on the land, why are you increasing the value of the land if it's the same land? Nothing has been done to it. I didn't put a driveway, I didn't put anything in, so I'm just curious what, why that would change. Yeah, the, um, the breakdown of the, the assessment, uh, be it improvement or land or everything that, the, all of, everything that goes into the stew of the improvement in the land, that's all part of my modeling. And uh, there may be, I, I would use, now if you knock the house down, that's not necessarily what the land would sell for. Um, you're basically. No, I understand. And I'm saying I just right. don't know why. If I have two, I understand. Lots, why is one assessed? So why it's not. So when you're talking about residential properties, I'm not analyzing what is the value of a piece of vacant land in that area. I'm analyzing what is the value of the of a residential of residential properties in that area, based on the sale prices that have occurred in that what we call a value control sector. It's uh, essentially a neighborhood. Call it. Typically, that's like a geographic area. Um, sometimes it may be I have uh, you know condos that it would be you know per unit so the B line would basically be a value control sector um, based on the sale prices I would increase or decrease what the by, by using the land form the land formulas what the total assessments are to get the total assessments to equal market value um, the maybe you're in two different value control sectors 
Uh, oh, that's well. So then, that's exactly why. Yes, that's exactly why your five family is. Yeah, I mean, I what's what's really interesting one. here is uh, I'm starting to see there's a house on Fourth that just sold for uh, 1.075, and it's a single family, and it's uh, there there may start to be a trend of single families actually selling for more than four family houses. Yeah, I uh, you know, it's. Well, you got people coming in and we'll just bet right. 500,000 for an abated hundred year old before we buy a house. That's right. Yeah. But I just was I just noticed when I was going through this this meeting how come all of a sudden you know. The, Land value went up. It's the same lot. Nothing's been done to the lot. I just that was a, you know, right. Yeah, it's part of the modeling. I use the land. I, I manipulate the land and the improvements to uh, statistically. And you guys are probably getting tired of hearing the word statistical, but um, to statistically achieve 100% market value. Hi, Eric. I have a question uh, on the uh, distribution of the changes. Um, that you noted. Um, I'm curious how when you're looking at an increase, a property increase projected at 20%, that I, I guess if you could explain a little of the logistics of how 65% of the people in that pool are having a decrease. Um, the assessments going down on... on no, the assessments going up less than uh, 20%. Right. Is that what you're so, talking about? Yeah. So, yeah. so that it, in other words, Proportionately, I guess, why? Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, proportionately, a great example would be, let's say that nobody changed at all except for I-Star, and I increased I-Star by uh, whatever percent I did. When you look at the net valuation of the town, the net valuation of the town would have gone up, I don't know, let's just use an arbitrary number, 2%, and everybody else remained unchanged. Well, everybody would be lower than the baseline. Mm -hmm. So there's... Uh, different properties within different categories that things that the assessments have changed to different to varying degrees based on the most recent uh, sales data. So you may have an area of the city that uh, went up on a 15 percent. Uh, you may have a, a condo building that um, you know, sh like Shoreview, for example. There's really very very high and a lot of sale prices in Shoreview that uh, have essentially proved that my assessments are way too low. Uh, that's not fair to the rest of the people in the city because they're not uh, effectively they're not paying what their fair share of the 28.4 million dollars is because they're not at market value. So I analyze all of the uh, all of the sales data per per you know value control sector or per condo building, and things are definitely going to change at varying levels. You know to make sure that the distribution is fair. Okay, so there so there can be that much of a dramatic swing. Say from a neighborhood to a neighborhood. Well, I mean, dramatic. Uh, dramatic is, well, is really the middle name of Asbury Park's market. Forty percent increase versus a five percent increase. Yeah, uh, you know, it's not necessarily always just because the market. Um, it could be because my assessment was too low. Now we have new data that is supporting that the assessment was too low. I think that would probably be the case with iStar. Um, do I think that in one year iStar's property values went up sixty-five percent? Um, or the gentleman that was up here before, uh, I forget what the percentage is that he said, uh, do I think that that value of the, the commercial property on Cookman went up in a single year, uh, 60%? Um, that may, no, no. I mean, there, there could, there's other factors in there that maybe they were they're simply underassessed. Maybe there's buildings, uh, Deal Lake Village is a good example, where my assessments this year were like right on top of market value. So you're going to see the assessments in the in Deal Lake Village remain virtually the same, probably slightly higher, but their taxes will go down because uh, proportionately they're going up less than the 20% of the total uh, net value of the town. Okay. Great, thank you. No problem. <clears throat> I just have a question, question around the appeal process. So you've mentioned Houses sale, sale, sales, property value, all that based on the sale of property in the town. So when I'm um, appealing my uh, assessment, mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to know, you mentioned neighborhoods, different things like that. In the appeal process, can we include um, first responder uh, 
the police, how often the police department has to come to no. the corner of your street, how quick, how often well, well, e EMT comes? Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I don't want to say. A, that is, um, you know, that is a uh, distinct negative vet property. Gotcha. Yes, you I can mean, definitely the, say that to yeah. commissioners. Okay. You can definitely, um, you know, make, whether the commissioners or myself agree that that is a uh, impact of value. Is everybody, are the other comps um, affected to the same degree? And then most importantly, um, how do you quantify what that is? Uh, if you're on, let's say that you're on a, um, you, you're on a main street yeah. and um, you know, what is the difference between being on a main street and not being on a main street? In order to quantify that, you'd really have to look at sales that, are, that have the same exact situation. Well, when you statistically look at the percentage of, let's just t say, um, the police, right? So if you have a, a house on a block that the police come three times a day, right? And um, the average block in Asbury, the police come once a month, proportionally. Yeah, but that's, you know, so what mean, somebody's willing to pay is not only yeah. attributable to how many no, times I'm the police show up at the corner. No, I'm just saying as a factor in the appeal you process. Can, you can explain it however you want to explain yeah. it to the commissioners. Um, I'm just telling you that that is, uh, it'll be a difficult argument to make. So what, um, so what you really want to do is find houses that are, yeah. that have, that experience the same, every, I mean, ideally, yeah. you'd find your exact mirror image of your house across the street. Put a mirror Im okay. uh, on the, the center of your street and the house across the street from you that's exactly the same as yours, just sold, yeah. and you're assessed for 400, they just sold for 350, there is literally no difference. Yeah. Um, you would want to use that a as a good comp. Park that's exactly like mine. What's that? I said it's unfortunate there's not well, a that's, Well, and that's exactly the, that is the difficulty with, um, you know, with appraisal. Uh, yeah. the, the, the less homogenous the development is, yeah. the more difficult it is to make those comparisons um, but you still have to really do your best to do to do so. Yeah. Uh, as a property owner, you want to make sure that you you have a the uh, fair assessment. So you want to digest right. as much information yeah. as possible. And when it comes to an appeal, it's not really a statistical uh, thing. This the statistical word that I'm using is more about how I'm analyzing the entire municipality and. Um, the, the gentleman before was concerned if you can do 4,500 properties. Well, yeah. obviously, I'm not going to 4,500 properties individually and doing a fee-based appraisal. How many people here have had um, had appraisals on their property for finance purposes, and you you got the appraisal back and you said this appraiser doesn't know what he's talking about? Um, yeah. That's on an that's on an individual level, and that cost you $400. So if you can imagine. Doing a fee-based appraisal I, on every I, I house totally here. I totally get how you do it. Yeah. I'm just saying so, that there's, when, you know, based on all the conversation around appeals, it seems like we're taking one data point, which is comps in your area for houses. Comp, I, yes, and right? similar condition and is a big, sim big thing yeah, here. Similar condition, I get it. So I understand that piece of it. I was just, my only question was, are there other data points that we could bring into the appeal process that would help you assess the whatever property you feel, in, in an accurate way. Whatever you feel is an impact on market value yeah. of your house, you can arrange whatever argument you think is appropriate. Um, whether or not I agree with the argument yep. is a different story. Yep. You know, without listening to the argument, I don't know. Uh, and then as far, so when it's an appeal, it's one thing. When it's um, the reassessment of the municipality, you know, I, I have a different hat where I'm concerned about uniformity. Let's say that you have an issue and let's say we're able to quantify that issue realistically. Yeah. Yeah. We're able to quantify the issue and that is the value, that impact that, that that individual component has. I want to make sure that I address every other property that has that same, that same thing. So um, I'm reluctant to take something like the amount of police, the amount of calls that police came to your corner. I'm not comfortable that that is, I'm comfortable that that was, uh, the value impact was $10,000 per police call. It's, it's just um, probably not an appropriate analysis, but do, you know, you do, do, do whatever you think is appropriate to determine the value. Well, that's typically, yes, that's typically the case. And, you know, usually when you look at the sales in your, in your geographic area, they should all be influenced by those same factors. Okay. Um, or to, to some degree, you know, to some degree, yes, they should be. 
Um, don't, again, don't use a comp in the southwest if you're in the, in the northwest. If you're in the southwest, it's probably not going to help you. Don't use a comp in the northwest if you're in the southwest. How about a softball? Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eric, uh, great presentation. I want, I want to thank you for this. Uh, it's, That's, then, you know what? We're done here. Thank you. Uh, it's, right, it's right up my alley. I, I like facts, figures, uh, numbers, and technical, like taxes. technical details. I hate the taxes. <laughs> okay. And uh, I know that you are either the villain or the hero in uh, cases like these, depending on which end of the spectrum the taxpayer is on. Um, Something that I've been wondering about and following for years is the progress on the beachfront. And you alluded um, to ISTAR specifically on the beachfront as uh, being a focus of some of your activities. What I'm uh, extremely concerned about is the actual uh, boardwalk properties, the pavilions, convention hall, uh, casino complex, and the heating plant. Uh, for those here who don't know, those were at one time public property tax exempt, as was mentioned, uh, similar to this building. Uh, they've been put on the tax rolls now for several years. Uh, Madison Asbury uh, LLC owns them, not iStar. And I'm wondering uh, what the trend has been and how you ch face that challenge of not having anything like right. that in the immediate area, including Long Branch, which has nothing yeah. like we have. Yeah, uh, so my, really, my, rule of, uh, my rule of thumb is uh, effectively, if there is no data, you should really be changed to the degree of what the municipality changed. Um, so I think for the most part, if there's a lack of data, uh, things would be increased by 20%. Um, it would be not fair to not address those properties because there is no data. So you have to, uh, you have to again, it's, it's very difficult to value a power plant, a decommissioned power plant heating that's plant. on the waterfront. Steam heating plant. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, a, plant. it's a huge, huge challenge. And the other layer of that is um, a concern, a fiscal concern from the municipality standpoint of if there is an appeal on a very valuable property, uh, let's just use I-Star, let's put them into one package, all their properties. and. Uh, they're assessed for a hundred million dollars and they look at sales and they think that they should be assessed at 20 million dollars well they file appeals and those appeals uh, if if that is if they are granted one house you don't even feel the difference but you lose 50 million dollars of rateables in an appeal especially after the taxes have already been apportioned to who's paying what now the city has to refund taxes and um, in the past and outside New Jersey, many municipalities face very long dockets on the tax, uh, the tax, in the tax court of very valuable properties going back multiple, multiple years. In some cases, 10, 15 years of, uh, of open appeals on a very valuable property. The Borgata was a big case that, uh, that was uh, the municipality lost and in Atlantic City and had a huge refund to pay back to the property owners. So, so forgive me if, I, if, the I'm under, if I'm understanding you, you're saying you use kid gloves or a light hand to those that may argue with a high assessment. I, uh, I absolutely wouldn't speak, characterize a 65% increase that way. Speak no. specifically to uh, Convention Hall, for example. What has been the trend of Convention Hall and what is its current assessment? Uh, off the top of my head, uh, Usually I'm pretty good with these things. I don't know what the, the assessment of convention hall is off the top of my head. Okay. Um, it probably went up about 20% this year. Okay. Um, uh, in a similar vein to You could pull it up online. Somebody could pull it up. It's yeah, uh, block, great. Yeah, pull, out, block pull out the phone. Block 4502, lot, um, lot uh, 1.18. I mean, somebody wants to pull it up it, on the site, you could test your skills yeah. on on the site there, you can see what the assessment is. I mean, to, to my mind, that should be one of, uh, if not the highest rateable uh, in the entire city, uh, based on location and, uh, and the building itself. Um, in a similar vein, the, uh, the casino complex. Uh, you had alluded earlier to saying that vacant lots that have approvals on them get a higher treatment than those that uh, do not. And I understand that because of the potential that's there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering how the vacant concrete pad where the arena was located is being treated because that in effect has a de facto approval to construct as part of the redevelopment plan. In fact, it's mandated that that be constructed on. Um, 
so how do you deal with that? Um, that particular property, I don't, uh, I don't have all of the, the information, of course, at my fingertips here, but mm -hmm. uh, that is an interesting uh, concept. And when you talk about if something is, uh, if it has approvals, the mere existence of approvals does not necessarily mean that it's more valuable. Mm -hmm. um, it needs to be financially um, uh, feasible to do the project. It needs to realistically be, um, you know, uh, the zoning has to comply with it. And I don't know what those approvals are. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm certainly willing to take a look. I'm, I'm bringing um, it to your attention then. I appreciate that. And that's okay. something that, uh, that I should absolutely look into. And I'm, I'm interested to see what those approvals are because off the top of my head, I don't know what those approvals are. And if that, if whatever those approvals are, are financially feasible for the project. Mm -hmm. Well, if it, it's, it's- Convention Hall went up 20%. What's the assessment on it? Um, it was six, six million? Six, nine, 11, now it's eight, So Convention Hall's 8.2 million. 8.2 million, seems mm -hmm. outrageously low. Well, I, where's your analysis, Warner? <laughs> <laughs> well, you could do uh, possibly a original construction cost of uh, this is about what what versus uh, infl to versus for. inflation, uh, right? Something like that. Um, okay. So the, the pavilions uh, are they in kind of the similar ballpark? They're very uh, unique. Uh, also, from a square footage standpoint, the pavilions are definitely uh, per square foot valued much higher than Convention Hall. Um, I don't know if it's higher than six or eight million. You could look up uh, probably the First Avenue Pavilion, mm -hmm. um, and that's uh, block four five zero two. I think lot one point zero six. Uh, someone could look up look up that Ryan. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's it's probably assessed for uh, in you know well over five six million. I would say. Interesting. For sure. Interesting. You look them up. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna look up some of these and uh, maybe get in touch with you and have some discussion with you. Uh, that concrete well, look, is, again, is an interesting This is one. not about uh, cherry picking individual properties. This is about modeling an entire municipality. Oh, absolutely. But that's, sure so that unique, that's such fairly. a unique environment down there. You I could, agree. You know, yeah, you and that's, you know, know with the, the properties with the pavilions, um, they're absolutely done like on an in income approach. Mm -hmm. um, the same thing that the gentleman before that owns the commercial properties on Cookman, everything is done on an income approach. And okay. um, unfortunately, when things go to the tax court, uh, you could be exposed to serious, uh, serious refunds if the tax court says that I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. um, little kid gloves, I don't, <laughs> the, uh, the gentleman before would not tell you I use little kid, yeah, kid yeah, gloves. Yeah. Uh, Fair, fairness, I you know, 20% increase on the rateable base is absolutely not little kid gloves. Uh, I'm trying to get down and dirty and make sure that the distribution is as absolutely fair as possible. I think the statistical analytics will, will support that. Uh, and as time goes on, I think it will even uh, more strongly support it as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, thank you thank very you. much. I appreciate the info. It wasn't so bad. <laughs> How you doing? I'll, uh, I'll make it as quick as possible. Obviously, we're all happy our property values are going up. It's exciting. You know, I bought a year ago. It's like my exact anniversary. And I'm kind of regretting where I moved. I live in a neighborhood with police activity to the point before it's just through the roof. Um, single room, single room occupancy, boarding houses, boarded up apartment buildings, drug activity, it's, it's horrible. So the question I'm asking, the point I'm making this is that, so when I go to you to possibly do an appeal here, what's the protocol of the radius you're looking at? Block away, five blocks away? Yeah, there's no protocol. I mean, you know, what you really, uh, what I'd be certainly interested to see is what your purchase price was and what your current assessment is and to see if that is um, you know, reasonably in line with one another. Uh, if you bought a year ago, hey, you know, the market has gone up quite a bit even in the past year. If you're 10% higher than what you bought it for last year, then that wouldn't shock me either. Um, when it comes to the appeal, we're gonna use whatever is most relevant in your individual circumstance and your individual purchase price without me knowing your property and without me knowing if it's higher or lower than your current assessment. Your individual per, uh, pro, uh, purchase is going to lend uh, quite a bit of credence into whether you have a fair assessment now or not. Okay. I mean, what my, my purchase price was, was higher than what you assessed me at, which I guess is And really then good. you don't want to file an appeal. <laughs> it's just like living here for a year, I've looked at this whole thing in a completely different way. I mean, it's unfortunate, you know. Um, and I'm hoping that, I was hoping the neighbor was going to turn around here, but it's just, it's not. So, but that's, I just want to know the protocol, like, well, you know, 
block, two blocks, three blocks, I guess it's minus nine. What were these reassessments? Yeah, the, on the, the cover of the Asbury Park 2018 reassessment report, those are um, effectively, for the most part, they're outlines of the value control sectors. Uh, it's not necessarily the case, it's not the case in, in every one of those geographic regions because each of those geographic regions may contain a commercial property here or there that um, is not connected to the, what, what I'm uh, describing as that value control sector. But that would be a good place to start, um, you know, look at a sale in your development. You can look at the cover of that and see, uh, does the assessor think that it's in the same value control sector as, as, um, as what my house is in? Uh, you know, and just because it's not in the value, same value control sector doesn't mean that it's a bad comp. You may find one that's in a neighboring one. Um, there is no, no specific radius that's appropriate, unfortunately. I would love to be more definitive with you and say you need to find a comp that is six houses down and within 200 square feet of your house. Um, unfortunately, appraisal's not that way. You have to um, take the emotion out of it and look at the sale prices of similar houses and, and in this case your house because it is a recent sale and what does, uh, what does the market say that if I put my house up on the market today what would I list it for? What would I list it for? What do I think that I could get for my house? What are people going to buy it for? Yeah and that's, and that's the, I mean, I, I lived in Wesley Grove and Cook, Cook and Ave. Wesley Grove, you don't pay conventional taxes. No, I know, I lived there. Oh, I, got it, you moved, I, got I it. sorry about home. that. And, you know, it was a big change for me, obviously. Right. And, you know, I just know for a fact, you know, I did it because I lived in town, but if someone comes out of town and drives up and down my block all the time, they're going to go, what is this? You know, it, it's, it's, it's terrible. You know, but I know I, every neighborhood is different around here. You know? Yeah, along with those, um, along with the, you know, the police activity or whatever that you're referring to, come, there's still those sale prices that can't be ignored. People are buying those properties for these prices. Well, well, you know, all of that is factored in. You know, what? Well, how do you reduce uh, the assessment for the the police that drive by? If the house next to you sold for X, or your house sold for that, that was factored into the purchase price. You know, nobody's spending a half million dollars on properties, uh, not doing their research. Um, I shouldn't say nobody. There probably are some people, but uh, you know, the typical sale it was digested by the market, and. All of those factors uh, should be theoretically factored in. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Uh, you talk about the assessed value. I mean, uh, with the pilots, how much assessed value is taken out with the pilots in total? Do you know that number? I don't know that number. Um, you'd have to look at several projects, and you can add them up. Uh, you can see what my opinion of the of that number is by. Uh, downloading a spreadsheet on the, the county tax board website and um, extracting out everything that's not pilot. So you could take North Beach and, you know, North Beach, what is it, uh, 200 and something properties, 200 and something units. Uh, North Beach, I think I, you asked me the same question in my office the other day. I think I looked at North Beach, it's 100 million, yeah. 100 million dollars in North Beach. Um, now, that does, does that mean that they're not paying? They aren't, they're not paying taxes, no, you're correct, but they yeah, are paying this pilot system. payment to the municipality, and um, typically, pilot payments are actually great for the municipality, uh, because your taxes are only uh, going about, you know, 60% or so to the, to the town, uh, to the city here, uh, as opposed to pilots. Pilots is about 95% of it is kept by the city, so, uh, who does it hurt? Uh, unfortunately, it hurts me. I live in Ocean Township, and um, I will pay slightly more because the way that the, uh, the county budget is distributed, because Asbury Park doesn't have these rateables. So it, it hurts people outside of Asbury. Um, people inside Asbury, typically, they, they make out very well with the pilot agreements. No, but the, is that assessment taken out of? The rateable base, yes. Yeah. Yes, out. if you so add right if you now, add all the not. rateables, if you add all what the value is, that that figure of 1.6 is far greater. Um, you know, North Beach alone, we said was about 100 million. Yeah. Um, the Wesley Grove is probably 50 million. Uh, you add if you start to add all those up, I'm sure you the value of Asbury Park far exceeds two billion dollars. I, I would absolutely expect that. Uh, um, you know, values of churches and 
you know, charitable properties, all of those properties that are on, you know, classified as exempt because they're a church, um, that's a, that is value. The Greek church, uh, the old Greek church, somebody bought that for $1.9 million. Well, that's an exempt property. That's not in your rateable base. So that's a $2 million property just on one single lot. Um, but and that's like being a, taxed, a spec. Not, and it doesn't help the residential. Uh, the other two, the budget, the budget is, is the share, is the levy. And let people know that that budget gets increased 2% because it's on transitional aid. So, I mean, that's something you don't deal with, but a lot of people know that levy is increased 2% because of being on transitional aid. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't think, I think, you know, there's budgetary caps for municipalities and for schools. Um, there's not any mandate that anyone has to raise an additional 2% every well, year. Well, yeah, on, transi they have on transitional, transitional aid. Transitional aid, you have, oh, you have to, yeah, raise, I, yeah, you have you to know, raise 2%. You, you may know better than I, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. And uh, the last thing is with the I-Star property, if they start building more, we get more, we get more rate, we mean more assets value, and that distributes better yeah. for the for the rate. Yeah, I mean, if it's if it's typical rateables, you'd have more rateables to spread your tax burden across. If they're pilot properties, then you would be getting a pilot. Pilot money is no different than parking revenue to the city, or um, you know, uh, tickets, or I, I don't know, beach badges or something. But well, we want. It's well, we really. Want, yeah, what's that? I have, I have no idea. I'm not part of um, allowing any pro pilot programs. The pilot programs, once it's approved, that's, and then my job is to take the, um, take the assessments. For example, the Monroe right now, uh, I dealt with this year. Uh, they didn't exist before. Now I put them on the taxable, uh, or not the taxable, I put them on as assessments with land and improvement, but it's my job to classify it, basically turn the switch off. So whether you're on, you're a class one, two, three, four, um, and yeah, you're in a rateable base, class one through four, or you're off and you're a class 15. Now, when you're um, a church, you're off and you pay nothing. When you're a pilot, you're off and you pay a separate payment, for, essentially for being off, for being, you know, for allowing the switch to be turned off of conventional taxes, you pay a pilot payment. And some of the new agreements, there's not only a pilot payment, but a special assessment agreement. But we want we want people to build on those properties. It, it's better for the. It's better for. Yeah, you're you're correct. Um, yeah, I, I would, you know, the analysis that has to be done whenever there's new development, uh, in terms of it, to answer if it's going to increase or decrease taxes is, does the development increase the cost to the municipality to a greater percentage than what the cost of the than what the value of the development is. Um, I would find it very hard to believe that uh, any of these new projects that would come on, like for example in the beachfront, would, would hurt the city. Um, most of the time it's going to increase maybe marginally what the costs are to the city. However, the uh, revenue to the city if it's pilot or the rateable base if it's conventional taxes uh, is exponentially more than those numbers. So yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, it will benefit the city. Uh, to uh, to have more more construction of especially more the more valuable units. Hello, Eric. Uh, thank you for the forum. A lot of good questions on the floor that were asked by people here. What I wanted to say is, when the person was talking about Cookman Avenue, they never brought up that a lot of the store owners pay net, have net leases, and they're the ones absorbing their taxes. So I didn't think his argument was good. The other one is. Since everybody's been bringing up about cherry picking idea, we're worried about one place or another. I think we should do the taxes where you get a owner occupied tax relief. So if you're owner occupied, you pay a different rate of tax than when you're building is a total income property. Like on the west side, there's lots of houses. So when I, the, no, I just want to bring that up. And well, I, I want to address the question. Let me address okay, the question because okay. it's a statement that. Um, I have to tell you, it it's, would be unconstitutional for me to do that. Um, the, when we went to dinner, Rita, remember when we went to dinner with Donald? Uh, the napkin, we called, it, I, we called it the Constitution because that is how 
the Constitution is in New Jersey. It's not a law. It's, it's ingrained in the Constitution that you, it's an ad valorem, you know, ad valorem state. You pay based off the value that you have. So the distribution has to be based off the value. There's no mechanism for me to go in and say, I am going to assess this property differently because who's living there? It would be completely inappropriate for me to do that. Well, how come in New York City they have that? New, I don't know. New York is no, not they do, because I know an ad valorem state, maybe? I don't know. No, we said it's unconstitutional. Maybe Unconst it's New Jersey Constitution. Okay, well, then maybe we need to redo it, because <laughs> if they can do it in New York City with 8 million people. Coconut and Avenue would love it. They'd I mean, love that should it. be done here. The other thing is the non-rateables, I think they should be attacked or some kind of payment in lieu for their improvements when they build a new building or they put a big addition they should pay something for the services that they're going to use and the reason I bought about owner occupied we have multi-family in a 2,000 square foot house that may have 16 people living in them where we have other houses that are 4,000 square feet a three family and only three people live in them and I think you should that's why owner-occupied versus a non-owner-occupied. So it, it, it goes back to the same concept. That is uh, relative to me ordering the lobster and the shrimp and the champagne. Rita had a salad and Donald had whatever he had, the taco, taco salad. And um, I may have ate all the food, but the New Jersey Constitution has nothing to do about the distribution of what that, that $100 bill has nothing to do with I ate the lobster. Has nothing to do with it. It's, there's a total disconnection. So the relationship there in that analogy is the lobster and the champagne and all of that is all those people inside that house. Maybe they're costing the municipality more money. I don't know. I, you know, I don't know that to be true. But I'm saying maybe that is the case. Maybe they're costing the t this town more money. Um, unfortunately, for what you're, you know, from your perspective. They do not. Uh, they will not be billed in based on that. It has nothing to do with it. It's a, what is the house worth? They're gonna. The distribution of the twenty-eight point four million is based off of the values of the house. So the amount of money we had in our pocket that was our constitution. Okay, well, I just wanted to think out of the box instead of saying the way Talk we were. Talk to your legislators. It. Okay. <laughs> um, the other thing, since we have the mayor here, if people were worried about the taxes, they should come to the council meeting and keep the budget tight. Well, and that's what we have a city manager every, for. And that's what, instead of you being the scapegoat about let hitting me talk the taxes, to you. we need to control the budget. Let me talk to you as a property owner. As a property owner, not in Asbury, in, in Ocean Township, um, I think every municipality should uh, look into their budgets and keep their budgets as tight as possible. Uh, it would be unfair to characterize the city's budget as, you know, it's only the city problem. A lot of that budget is other other parts. The county, you know, you need to go to your counties. You need to go to your city, your municipalities. You need to go to the state and make sure that make sure that things are up to snuff. Um, personally, I'm not into uh, open land. I don't, this has nothing to do with me being a tax, tax assessor. This has to be has to do with me being a taxpayer. Yeah. I'm not into the open land. Don't care about it. I voted no on the referendums. The reason I voted no is because I don't want my taxes to go up. I don't care about that kind of stuff. I don't care about an addition going up my school in Ocean Township. I don't want them to spend 40 or 80 million dollars on their on the school because that means my taxes are going to go up. A lot of this, and ov yet overwhelmingly, both of those referendums they they go with flying colors. People yep. vote yes, and uh, I'm not faulting them. I'm not faulting them because maybe that's what they want. But they also need to understand that that is going to increase their taxes. The more services, the more police. The more um, you know, roads you want paved, if you want parks, you want all of this stuff, it will cost you money. It's the equivalent, and it, unfortunately, it's the American way. For, for the American voters, it's really the American way, uh, living outside of your means. And New Jersey, 50th of 50 of property taxes, 50th of 50 of taxes, um, all taxes. And the reason is because costs are, are really high here. And it goes to pensions. and. Um, they don't want to give me a pension. They don't want to give me pension and benefits here because I'm part time. But um, uh, you know, pensions, benefits, uh, salaries, uh, everything—it all costs money. And I agree with you. I definitely agree. Okay, that's Sum what the people. Up. 
You should be concerned about your municipality. Well, that's what people should every, be talking every about. Every municipality should be concerned. Every taxpayer should be concerned about their municipality's okay. budgets. Well, that's what I'm saying. Instead of worrying about one council person's property, should be worried about how to keep taxes down. The other thing is, um, I'm glad that you'll use another town for the vacant land because in long run, three quarters of an acre went for three million dollars. Like on 21 ba North Bath Avenue. It's like unbelievable numbers, yeah. and here they're crying about taxes on vacant land. And what Warner brought up about building, like the convention hall, assessed on what it would cost to construct, but they keep it in such a sad state. That way, if it gets I renovated, put on it'll be assessed higher. It will be, without uh, a doubt. Uh, but that's why I said exponentially higher. The, a lot of the problem with that building that I'm certainly aware of and reflected in my assessment is the condition. Um, I even I had an appeal on that a few few years back, probably t uh, six years ago. I think I had an appeal, maybe back in 2011 or 12. Uh, I had I think I came into Asbury and there was an open appeal on that. And um, you know, again, the tax court is looking at income, income for income producing properties. And the, when you look at the income versus the expenses on that property, uh, it's a, it's a dismal picture. Um, and a, when you're in my position to make the argument uh, as the defendant in the case. Uh, it, it does become difficult um, in in those situations. So, if the if the con if convention hall was uh, more financially sound, uh, if other properties rents go up, uh, you will absolutely see higher assessments on those properties and relief onto the residential. Well, what I wanted to add that's why I put on Facebook: people who fix up their properties get punished, and the people who leave their property in bad condition get the tax ride. And it's not fair with convention hall, the arena platform, and you got other small time developers here, they fix up their property, and then all of a sudden the taxes go way up. And they may. Back to the I, Constitution. Well, I'm just saying you know, that but I can I, see both sides I, of it. I could see disagreeing with it, understood. Um, you know, personally, I, I like some, I, uh, you know, some level of paying for by the service, but. Uh, that you that you like I don't have children right now um, it, it would be great if I didn't have to pay school taxes uh, personally but on the flip of that Seaview Square Mall doesn't have any kids in the school system and I don't know what uh, the assessor in Ocean has that property assessed for uh, I don't know maybe I'll look into it and file an appeal well, to increase it um, but uh, well, that's you know. based on the income it brings in too yes. okay thank you for your time Eric and appreciate thank you thank you How you doing? Uh, Going out first, with a bang. First, I want to thank you for this presentation that you have here. I, I've attended many meetings in the city, and this is the first time I I understand what what's going on now and with this presentation. It's good that you have a hard copy that we could take home and study. The other thing I wanted to ask you about is, you said that you um, we have four thousand five hundred properties. Somewhere around there, yeah. um, you know, it's it's not easy. I can't just tell you a, a quick number. If you download the spreadsheet of the town, there's a lot of double line items because of the pilot stuff. So I think mm -hmm. if you download the spreadsheet, it's about 5,000 line items. Um, when you extract all those doubles and the master lot of the condo associations, which we probably have 100 of them here, mm -hmm. um, it's probably down to about 4,500, somewhere around there. Do you know how many nonprofits we have? Uh, I would think about 60-ish, 60 or so, seven, 66, 67, if I remember correctly. There used to be a number like 83. I don't know if that's still accurate. Well, uh, you know, I audited all of them. <laughs> you, you know you were at um, one of the, the trials. Yeah. And, um, yeah, if, if you're not entitled to the exemption, you should absolutely be conventionally assessed so that the burden is distributed onto you and others aren't inappropriately subsidizing you. Um, I took away some exemptions, I took away some, some partial exemptions, I made them taxable and of course you know I'm, I'm the, uh, you know Warner uh, put it best, I'm either the enemy or the, um, uh, the champion, the hero. Unfortunately that's not the case. I'm, I'm, I'm never the hero in any situation. I'm always the enemy. Uh, because it because uh, that these meetings uh, are not widespread throughout the state, and because there's a lack of understanding amongst the public of what the assessment function is for, it's for.
for the distribution of the taxes. If they understood that, the public, gen the general public, um, universally understood that, then maybe that would be the case. Maybe you understand it. Maybe um, maybe that's how you feel. That depending on who I'm talking to, uh, it was either the villain or the or the hero. And um, unfortunately, it's not the case because uh, you know as people change, it, it, I become. I become the, the villain no matter what. <laughs> now, I wanted to ask you about, you know, one of my sore spots is the pilot programs. Have they, uh, well, I could see in the beginning in 2002 that we needed them. Do you think at this point in time we still need pilot programs? Uh, I mean, look, again, if I, were, uh, if I were the director of redevelopment, that's really a question for Michelle. Um, oh. If I were the director of redevelopment, I think I'd be more comfortable answering that question for you. But okay. I'm not. It's really not my area of expertise. I don't know what municipalities need for redevelopment. There's a lot of questions that need to be asked um, by uh, those who decide if it's, if it's a good idea to enter into a pilot agreement or not. Not only is it the impact of that individual property, but the surrounding area. For example, the Asbury Hotel. Yeah. Um, is that financially a good deal for that individual property? Uh, in that case, I would probably say yes. but. Um, you know, the surrounding area as well. What is that going to do to the values of the properties? You know what happened this just a few months ago? Um, and this wasn't even, I didn't even think about this till just now, right? Just the Asbury Hotel, now that that's developed and not the old Salvation Army building, a vacant property, vacant land right across from the lake, one block up, just sold for $540,000. Vacant, one, a 50 by 150. $540,000 for a piece of vacant land. And uh, I guarantee you, if Asbury, the Asbury was not built, there's no way somebody bought that property for $540,000. And it was to clean up, clean up the, the, clean up the area, and um, you build it, if you build it, they will come. And that's really uh, what's happening here. Going back to the guy from Cookman, um, of course, you know, he's, he owns property on Cookman, and he was adversely affected by us fairly assessing properties. Yes, his taxes went up. Uh, he's concerned about the you know businesses running out of town, but we have data. We we see what's happening here. Property values are increasing exponentially. So um, his hypothetical is is clearly not accurate. It is simply I don't you know want to go too far into it. He's not here to defend his position. Um, but it's, it's inaccurate in the sense that we're in, we're in a reality now. This is, not a, this is no longer a hypothetical. The development here the, of the market is uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. It really is what's happening. I want to thank you again. It was thank very you. Good. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Anyone else?